Hi, I'm Peter Birch and welcome to my channel. If you're new to my channel, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Today we're going to be talking about monitor lizards. That's right, big scary lizards. And we're not talking about these spent little monitors. We're going to be talking about something even scarier again. Something a little bit smaller, but with a lot of attitude, just like this girl right here. Welcome to Critter Cam. Well, come on in guys. This is my lizard room. And today I want to talk to you guys about some amazing, beautiful monitors belong to the Adatra. So they're this miniature or the small dwarf monitor species. We're going to be talking about Varanus primordius. They do have a couple of common names. The um, blunt spined tailed monitor. They also have the northern spiny tailed monitor. But look at this gorgeous little creature right here. This is an adult and believe it or not, these guys have got probably just as much attitude as the big Spencer's monitors packed in such a little lizard like this guy right here. Now, not very much is known about these particular lizards from their environments, their ecology. Not really much is known at all. These guys are known to come from west of Darwin along the Adelaide River area and they inhabit some of the rocky escarpment areas. They've been found along rock cliffs and rock faces. They've been found in big piles of rocks. They've been found in dead logs and stuff like that. And today we've mimicked these environments and this is how I keep these guys in my home. Like I said, not much is really known about their natural ecology. It is thought that they were once a subspecies of the Varanus acanthurus, the spiny tail monitor, but anyone that knows Ackies knows that they grow much, much bigger than this. Now this is an adult Primordius right here. It's very cute little cuddly little things, but they also do have a bit of an attitude and <laughs> They're quite fast and nifty at that. Now, what I've chosen for my enclosures here are these exoterras. The exoterras that I'm using are the squat height ones. And the reason why is because we want to make sure that I get that nice consistent heat getting right through down to that area there. We've got about 20 centimeters or about eight inches for the Americans of radiation for the temperature to get down. Now the basking spot we want there, this is winter. So in winter time, we want to be in the high 20s, low 30s, and that's Celsius too. In summer, we want to be in the high 30s, low 40 degrees Celsius. Now when it gets too hot, unlike some of the other monitors up there, these guys will seek refuge and go and hide. They'll disappear amongst the rocks and they'll get underneath the timber logs and stuff like that. Now we always make sure they have ample supply of fresh clean water. We have good supply of UV lighting. We use these T5 lights. They have great radiation of UV light. Now with the T5s, I find them very powerful and they're very great. They're high output. So what we do there is to limit the amount of exposure. We don't overexpose. So in the old days, we didn't really use UV lights. We suffered from metabolic bone disease. Then we started using UV lights. We've seen some benefits. The animals started getting bigger, stronger, making more babies, showing naturalistic behaviors. They come out, they bask, even under the UV light when the heat isn't on. But also what we found is when the high output stuff started coming along, we started finding other issues because we're overexposing them now. Basically in the middle of the day where the high exposure to UV light is, we've got that on for seven or eight hours. That's just way too much guys, way too much. So how do we mimic nature? Well, for me, I just break it down to about a three or four hour period during the day where I give them that high exposure. The rest of the day, I can just switch it off. Now with all tubes and lighting with the UV stuff, we know that it'll last about six months unless you can actually test your lights to make sure that you're getting good radiation consistency. Now what I'm using here for heating I want you guys to know is I'm using the, the Smart Herb energy saving lights. Now there's two reasons why I'm using them. They've got this amazing unique reflector that helps funnel the light down and gives that nice perfect great hot spot. You know it gives a nice great radiation hot spot and it helps funnel the temperature down. And the change of globe is so easy. I don't need to go out and spend 30, 40 bucks on buying a globe. I can just spend four bucks and replace it with a quick little element and place it in there and up the wattage quite easy and they're available in 20 40 and 75 watt and for me it just makes it so much easier and quicker to be able to change globes and switch them around and not cost an absolute fortune at the moment i've got a 20 watt globe running in these closures during winter we've got a 20 centimeter radiation or eight inches and i'm getting about 30 to 35 degrees sort of around those temperatures and those radiations so you can imagine that wattage producing that much power or much heat is absolutely beneficial especially for desert species probably not so good for uh, your frogs and some of your rainforest species there you're going to need to start working with different light globes and stuff like that. But as you can see, a very simple setup. We've just got a nice good inch, inch and a half, 20 to 30 millimeters, I should say, of sand. Um, makes it a nice deep substrate. The animals can dig and do all sorts of things. I put the water bowl away from the heat. Don't be afraid to overfill the water bowl. Let the water spew over, get wet in the sand because they love wet sand. And when it, they do come time to laying eggs, they're gonna lay near the water bowl because the sand's nice and wet and they can dig a nice good burrow there and compact it back really well. We've got these nice flat rocks that we stack. They can get in between the rocks. They can get on top of the rock. The rocks actually hold heat. So they actually hold heat really well and they become a great heat bank. So when the lights do go off at night, these guys will still radiate a good amount of heat. So that's a nice bit of slate right there, which is great for holding heat and great for uh, stacking really well. We use some of these nice drier looking logs. I mean, aesthetically, they're absolutely amazing, but also it's more of what these guys would be hiding in in nature. We do have some artificial plants um, just to make it a little bit nicer for myself as a keeper. I don't think the guys actually know the difference between the real plants and the dead plants, um, especially in this 
this situation. They're absolutely gorgeous creatures, absolutely amazing animals. Now, I've been very fortunate to have bred them a few times now. Uh, what was the trick? I can't really tell you. I think it's very much like most northern species. These guys like it warm, they like it hot. I mean, this room holds temperature really well. It's a fridge room, basically. So fridge holding cold temperatures, but also expels heat. It also works the other way around, holds heat in well and expels the cold. So during winter, this room here, it does still sit around about 26, 28 degrees. Great on the cold mornings, you get in here in the morning, start working away. Yeah, by the end of the day, you get yourself a bit of a sweat going on. But these guys absolutely love this room and it's great and we can control this room. Now, when we do notice these guys during the warmer months, we spray them with water. We hit them with the water, right? It fills the humidity up. The humidity spikes, that actually increases air temperature, believe it or not. So this air temperature in here, if it was 40 degrees Celsius and I'm spraying water in there, and I mean you really soak it right you give it a great soaking the heat it acts like a bit of a hot box anyone that lives in humid environments you know you know exactly what I'm talking about you get that humidity up feels like you're in a 60 degree Celsius room but you get that temperature up really warm these guys go a bit crazy they'll start mating and then later on sort of around November December you know you might see them start actively looking for somewhere to lay eggs now if your substrate is only this thick they're probably not going to be too happy digging that now they need to dig down the same depth of their body to be able to do egg deposition lay their eggs so I actually have an egg box that I will place in there with some sand. They'll start showing interest. They'll go in and out of the box. They'll dig down. Once they start digging, you sort of you know in the right area. Also, the female will start putting on a bit of weight. Now, these guys will come out of winter and they're going to eat. And they'll eat like every second day. And I'll just pump the food into them. And then I'll start raising the temperatures back up. And that's when you'll start to see a bit more excitement. So when I do feed these guys, I give them a great variety of foods. I mean, they do like crickets, they do like cockroaches. So we try and offer a bit of variety in the food. But the most important part, guys, is this, calcium. Now, just using calcium alone is good and beneficial, along with the UV light, but calcium and vitamins is even more important. I use this multicolor dust because it covers all the bases, right? It's got vitamins and calcium. Now, the reason why they're both important is the calcium's important, but if you don't have vitamins, then the calcium can't be actually absorbed 100%. So calcium and vitamins helps absorb that. And what do we do? Basically, we just open the lid, we sprinkle it on top of the crickets, we give it a little bit of shake, it dusts and covers them, and then we offer them directly to the lizards. So we don't drill it over, Night, we do it straight away and then that way the benefit of the calcium and the vitamins on the outside of the crickets goes straight into the lizards as soon as they're getting eaten. Now I'm very fortunate to be working with these guys for some reason there's not so many of these beautiful lizards around they're probably not as bright and as colorful and big and glamorous for a little lizard these guys pack an absolute great punch and they've got so much character I tell you what they've got so much character sometimes they'll come out to, to actually see me as I open the cage and they'll eat out of your hands they're so gentle or sometimes they'll go for your throat right and they'll try and kill you but um, you know, Absolutely gorgeous little lizard. And I mean, hopefully, if I keel things in again well this year, I might be able to produce some more and get these back out on the market and hopefully get some more people interested with these beautiful species and continue to put them out through the hobby so we can get a great representation. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's show. I hope you enjoyed these enclosures. I mean, like I say, they're a squat exoterras. These guys are a 60 by 45 by 30. Great little tanks. They also make them in the 190s and 120s. Um, so, you know, they're great little variation tanks. I just put rocks in there. You make them great. We put these great rock backgrounds in there hit me up on facebook twitter and instagram until next time guys thanks so much get out and enjoy nature